there you go. Okay, so this is a recap of lecture four for BME uh, 3310. What we'll be doing in this lecture is looking at how to simplify the differential equation. We'll be looking at the the boundary conditions, common boundary conditions, and initial conditions, and um, another way to get that same differential equation through a shell balance. Let me go through here to the next slide, which is the equation of continuity for component A diffusing through uh, a substance. And it, this is what we derived in class previously in lecture three. And we can see this in terms of the flux here. The next slide, though, gives you the equation of continuity in more useful uh, terms, which is in terms of the concentration. This is a, probably the most useful slide form of it. And if we assume that there's constant diffusivity, constant density, no velocity, and no reaction rate, then it becomes, it simplifies to fix second law. Does that actually happen? Do you have those sort of simplified equations in the real world or close enough that you can approximate it that way? Yes, it does happen. Um, there, there would be times when there's something diffusing through a medium where there, it's not reacting with anything and the medium is not uh, flowing. There's no velocity. So fixed law, second law would uh, pertain in that situation. Cool. Okay, so let's, that's what these equations are. And what we need to do, we'll be applying these equations to our problems mm -hmm. and then integrating them to get the concentration. And so anytime you integrate, of course, you need the boundary conditions. These are just some examples of common boundary conditions. For example, the first one is concentration at a surface where you might know it as it might be a constant. Uh, you might know the mass flux at a particular surface. It might be zero, for example, because there's a, a hard surface there, so uh, mass can't be diffusing across it. Uh, you might know the reaction rate, or you might be have some way of specifying it. You might also know um, that the fluid is fl some fluid is flowing over uh, another phase, which means there might be convective mass transfer, and we will have ways in order to specify that boundary condition as well. So these are just common boundary conditions that you'll come across. So I'm, I, this makes sense conceptually. I'm trying to think about what would be examples in a body or a medical equipment situation where some of these might hold and if it's, you know, if it's easier to jump down to the example that we had work in the lecture and go from there, can do, but... Uh, so, for example, you might know, for the third one, you might know the rate at which something is being metabolized in, in body tissue. Mm -hmm. uh, you might know, for example, the concentration at the surface of a blood vessel. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. If the problem is not steady state, then you also need a boundary condition in time, uh, usually an initial condition. So often uh, the concentration will be the same, or you'll need to know what it is at time zero for the initial boundary condition. And I have to, if we could go back up for sure. a moment, mm -hmm. the terminology, the way these things are being written out in equations, I'm trying to make sure I've got that right. C is for concentration. Yes. Uh, so C is, this is concentration, and then the sub A in zero, this is time? That's right, that's right. So that's the concentration of component A, that's a zero, not a theta. <laughs> uh, the concentration for component A at time zero, so that's C A zero. Okay, so this is component, ah, component, there we go. My handwriting's terrible. And, in, and is concentration always represented by C? Um, not necessarily, but in this class we'll, we'll represent it with a C. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, so the steps that you're going to take when you're working a problem like this, of course the first thing you'll do is to draw a picture of your system uh, with all of the particular labels that you need. Always make, that's step one, then always make a list of whatever assumptions you make. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next step, step three, now we need to decide what what type of um, coordinate system is best for us. We have our choices of rectilineal, cylindrical, or spherical. Okay. So what you'll do is you will choose one of those coordinate systems and that is the form of the continuity equation that you will use. Would it make sense to go to the example and start doing that for we can do that. We, we can do that. Let's take our example here. Okay. Where we've got several tubes that contain pure oxygen in them uh, passing through tissue. And basically, we're just going to be looking at one tube here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is this left side, this is a cross section. Um, yes. Yes. This so is this, a this is the cross section. Um, as if you'd slice straight through this. That's right. And then this one is like a zoom in of that. Exactly. Got it. And now the tubes, you can imagine the tubes are going straight into the, the screen here. Okay. And the inner tube is a radius of R1 and the outer tube is a radius of R2. It's not going to... Okay. Yep. And we'll come back to these boundary conditions in a moment. Okay. Okay. Now, what type of coordinate system best suits this? Since it's cylindrical. Cylindrical. It's cylindrical. So That's not too hard. I'm going to go back up to my equation of continuity, and I'm going to use cylindrical coordinates. So I'm going to just... <laughs> Give us more space. <laughs> Erase everything here. Yeah, um, for those watching, this is very much a prototype <laughs> video that we are, are doing with uh, with the software setup that we already happen to have this afternoon. So, perhaps you might edit this part out. <laughs> okay, so I have my equation here, mm -hmm. and what I want to do is uh, determine which of these terms might be zero. So. In the first place, the problem is steady state, so that means that the concentration doesn't change with time, so that becomes zero. That's nice, because, I mean, I look at this equation, and I am mildly intimidated by it. it, it, it there's a lot here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is, it is frightening when you first look at it, but the beauty is looking through it and seeing what you can, what falls out, because um, the we don't have these problems. I mean, it's a steady state, for example. Right. There's no flow. So all of these velocities in the r direction, in the theta direction, and in the z direction are all zero. So now you see already on the, on the left-hand side here, all of this becomes zero. That's nice. Yes. <laughs> Let's see what we can do with the other side. So over here, this term the concentration, I do believe, is going to change with R radius. That makes sense. But I don't think it's going to change with theta. It's going to be symmetrical ab about theta. So that means that there's no gradient with theta. And you're just getting that from just physical intuition. If you have, if you have things flowing through a tube, there's no reason why it should go out one side or the other more. Right, right. We're assuming that everything is symmetrical. Okay. Um, and finally, then in the Z direction, uh, that Z direction is into and out of the screen. And we're assuming that it is the same all the, uh, way, through. All the way through it. So that means there's no gradient with respect to Z. That's nice. We do have a reaction rate, though. Oxygen is being consumed. So we're going to keep that term, and our equation becomes much simpler. There. 
Um, what happened to the DVR over there? Oh, thank you. I forgot that. Prototype. Well, <laughs> that's All right. much less terrifying. Yes. Yes, it's not so bad. And do we actually have all of the values for all those things? Uh, we will be able to find a value for diffusivity, as you did in your last problem-solving uh, session. Okay. We do have a term, we haven't discussed it yet, but we do have a term for the reaction rate. Okay. Uh, for oxygen being metabolized in the tissue. And then, because there's two differentials here, then we need two boundary conditions on the concentration of A, two spatial boundary conditions. Okay, so we will need the reaction rate, and we do need two boundary conditions on, on uh, the concentration of A. So, whoops, yeah. That, there you go. Let's go back here to okay. our example, and look at some of the boundary conditions. One of them is that the concentration of A, which is our oxygen, A is our oxygen here, at the surface, meaning at R, R equal R1, mm -hmm. is uh, related by Henry's law, which basically means that the concentration is proportional to the partial pressure by Henry's constant right here. Okay. And uh, this is my first exposure to Henry's law. Um, I'm coming from electrical engineering, so bodies and fluids are right. very new to me. Right. So it just means that it's proportional. So, for example, if I have the partial pressure of oxygen, mm -hmm. then the concentration of oxygen at the surface is linear. And the slope here, this slope, is the Henry law constant which we will find from experimental data. Okay, and so this, the information on this slide is stuff that I'm trying to think about, like, if I'm working through solving an equation like this, how do I know the bits of information that I'm using to um, take out or plug in various values? So, um, for instance, a lot of what we just did in the slide, um, up here mm -hmm. in saying, okay, the entire left side is equal to zero. Right. And we know that from the problem setup of mm -hmm. nothing moving. Right. Um, and then things like the theta, the angle doesn't value, that's more of a, we look at the picture, there's no reason it should, so we're going to get rid of it. Right. So some of it comes from the geometry of this of the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then this other stuff that we were just talking about in terms of uh, this information, mm -hmm. is this something that you know, a biomedical engineer would know, oh, I can go find these reference materials out there that describe to me how oxygen goes through tissues? I, I think they should. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, if, if they don't, I mean, um, they do now. <laughs> um, and this isn't the first time that they'll come across Henry's Law. Henry's Law applies to many different things. Cool. Okay. Um, another thing we need is the reaction rate. And we know the reaction rate is given by the michaelis menten form, which pertains to things that first have to adsorb onto a surface and then react. So um, I guess the, the reason why it looks like this isn't important, we just know from chemistry okay. um, and it, it, that this will be the, the form of the reaction. Okay, so that's just, it's, uh, I'm going to treat it as this is a formula someone else has figured it out, I can, I can plug stuff into here. Right, at this point, yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so now the reaction rate is in terms just of these values, which we can find experimentally. Okay, or in, in a book somewhere. Or in, or in a book somewhere. And concentration. All right. All right, so if we go back and plug these things in, 
to our equation. Our, our slide is a little sloppy, but here. I'm going to put it here. 0 is equal to uh, 1 over r that the r Okay. Okay. And now uh, substituting in for RA, it's minus RA max CA over KA plus CA. Okay, so just stubbing in the um, equation you just showed me. Right, right. Another thing I might mention at this point is that these partial derivatives now, mm -hmm. the R is the only um, variable here that we can take derivatives over so we could turn those into d by dr instead of the partial. Okay so I mean really we've just basically turned this into a math problem. That's right. That's right. Now now you could apply your differential equations knowledge <laughs> to mm -hmm. this equation. Uh, so we won't go any farther in solving this particular equation. It's just a mathematical problem. But we also have our uh, boundary conditions at r equal r1. Uh -huh. We know that CA is equal to uh, partial pressure of A in the tube over the Henry Law constant. And, and where do we get that part again? Um, this is from Henry's Law. Okay, that is, that's Henry's Law. Okay, yeah, that's, that's that. Henry's Law. I know it's difficult to read here. And that's the first one. The okay. second one at r equal r2, then um, by uh, because of the fact that we have several of these tubes in a bundle, mm -hmm. then at r2 it's impinging upon the r2 from the other tube nearby. And so from geometry, once again, we know that the gradient is going to be zero. The oxygen from one tube is not going to diffuse into the region where oxygen is diffusing in from another tube. Okay, so uh, I wish I could you know, make a little movie of this, but I'm sort of envisioning this in my head, like looking down to this cross section mm -hmm. of oxygen coming into the center of a tube and then sort of fading out in a circle until it impinges on the area where another tube has put has diffused oxygen into and then because there won't be any flux from this tube's region into the other tube's region then the derivative the gradient here is going to be zero okay okay so now we have our our equation um, it is a little challenging in terms of differential equations. It's not always this difficult to solve, but we can solve it, and we have the two boundary conditions that we need in order to do so. Okay, so that's, that's the complete process of setting up how to, at, at this point it's a math problem, so you go back to your different right. equation, differential equation textbook, you find, okay, this form of equation, what process do I go through to solve it? Exactly. Oh, maybe we just put it in MATLAB. <laughs> or perhaps just numerically yeah. Yeah, differentiate or integrate it. Okay, so that is, that is how you would solve the problem. Um, let's see. At another, another way we could have solved it is instead of going to that page that already had the equation for us, Mm -hmm. uh, which is what I would always do because the equation is al already there for me. <laughs> um, or we could generate that equation, we could derive it again ourselves using a differential volume. And so that's what this shell balance here is exactly the same as what we did in lecture three, only we used rectilineal, like rectilinear coordinates in order to derive the continuity equation. So that's what's going on here. Um, and is this stuff 
more of the if you find yourself without the equation because you're in the middle of the woods or something, mm -hmm. you could in theory go back and get it. Here's Absolutely. How you do so. Absolutely you can. And as a matter of fact, some people do this for fun. <laughs> But the vast majority of the time, like, you would not go through this process. You would just say, okay, cool, I can, I can derive it if I need to, but I don't need to. Let me just go look it up. Exactly. Exactly. But it is good to see the derivation at least once to know where it came from. Okay. Okay. So what we did is we, we solved the differential equations for mass transfer. Uh, we simplified it by knowing what what we could throw out because it went to zero through geometry, through um, boundary conditions, and so forth. And that was the, when you took the first or gigantic not equation. boundary conditions, but yeah, through, through the geometry and whether or not it's steady state, whether or not it's velocity, there's, uh, the fluid is flowing. Okay. Okay. So really, most of this was number one, and two, the, the thing on Shaw bounds is if you really wanted to go back and derive this yourself, you could in theory. Right, and I, I didn't go through the shell balance. The, the theory is all well laid out there, but that's the point of the shell balance. It's exactly the same derivation as what we did in the last lecture. Okay, so that, that's a nice like pop the hood thing, but mm -hmm. if you're studying, don't worry about practicing that necessarily. Right, right. Um, and finally, uh, the third point is the differential equation applies to the region where the mass transfer is occurring. In this case, in the example, it was through the tissue. So the tissue was from the smaller diameter out to the R1 to R2. And so um, just to, I'm going back to the picture. So that tells us what that means is that this tells us what's happening like in here. That's right. Right. We have no idea what's happening outside here. It doesn't tell us what's happening inside the tube with oxygen. And so if you right. apply this equation to try and find any of those values, um, it would be wrong. Thank right, you. right. It's in a different regime. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going back to I think we finished. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, so most of this was really point one. I yes. Think. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, experiment pausing. <laughs>